Hey folks, this plant here is in um, coming into its best um, condition, so it'd be great to make a video about it right now. I'm in the northwest of Sydney at a place called Maruta Ridge um, State Conservation Area, another threatened plant hunt, but that doesn't really matter. You can get this plant um, south of Sydney as well. This is a beautiful dwarf apple and gophra hispida. And it looks like this year, it's gonna have a beautiful flowering season, which is just starting to kick off. These beautiful staminate flowers, which if you're gonna measure from, you know, anthers across to anthers on the edge of the stamens there, well, they'd be about four centimeters across. Nice and big. And these are the buds. Now you can see in Angophora, they don't have a bud cap. They don't have the eucalyptus bud cap. You can see separate, what we'd call perianth parts there. Sepals and petals, which are gonna open to create these beautiful flowers. Now I don't want to, I don't want to detach these flowers and I've just seen a beautiful um, big blue bee visiting them too. I was trying to video that as well. But if I can do this justice on the back of the flowers without pulling it off, you can see the petals and the sepals on the back of the flower. Remember, eucalyptus won't have those. They get, they get kicked off in the bud cap. So... I've collected this one recently with plenty of buds on it. It's gonna have a beautiful flowering period. I don't think it has a beautiful flowering period every year, but it looks like this year, November 2024, it's gonna turn it on. Don't forget with Angophora, the opposite leaves. Pretty much opposite or sub-opposite in the juvenile and the adult form. It's hard to find them, you know, really alternate. They might be just, um, you know, slightly away from opposite, and we call that sub-opposite. They've got this beautiful venation on the underside too, if you zoom in with a hand lens. They've just got this really nice, um, probably not going to do that justice, but reticulate venation. See if we can keep trying. Yeah, there we go. It's um, really nice to look at. Strongly discolorous, as you can see. A really discolorous leaf. And flowers on the terminals, right out on the ends. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed about that bee. I was really trying to capture it. It was really big. It had a lot of metallic blue on it. Um, hopefully it comes back. These flowers are covered in insects at the moment. They just all flew off with me pulling it down. You can just see how beautiful it is. They, they can make a good street tree. And here's the fibrous sort of, I never really check out the bark much because it's so easy to identify. You, you don't sort of look at the bark, but it's, yeah, it's like, you know, broadly fibrous, messy. Often there's, there are a lot of dead sticks coming out. Oh. <laughs> I just whacked myself in the face. Um, yeah, nice chunky fibrous bark there. It tends to go right up to the branchlets. But, you know, it's not a, a eucalypt you're going to identify by the bark. You're just going to look at this beautiful, broadly fat um, leaves, which are just unlike any other Sydney eucalypt. You're just not going to confuse it with anything else. It's a great one to start off with to identify and it's called hispida because of these red hairs that it gets on the buds and sometimes on the stems as well but you got these really rough well they're sort of soft really hispid tends to mean sort of rough hairs but these are sort of nice and soft but maybe they're a little bit coarse but these beautiful red hairs on the peduncles and the pedicels as well as covering sort of the calyx of the flower. So you got nice long peduncles there, nice long pedicels. They still get described as being umbilasters, 
and you might have umbalasters of um, seven, I think, in these angophras. Buds in sevens, but you can see that they're sort of um, the the umbalasters are arranged in secondary sort of clusters, what we might call panicles or yeah, panicles would be a good word, maybe corums, but uh, the word for corimbia, but um, they're just terminal clusters anyway. But they're still described as having umbalasters, the angophras. And then of course I want to find some fruit. It's in the flowering stage, so fruit might be a bit harder to come by. But they're nice, genuine, big Angophra goblets, sort of woody wine goblets. I might terminate the video here and um, when I find some, I'll add those to the back end. Let's just have a look over here. Ah, here we go. All right, look and you will find. Here's some old ones. Well, that's what the flower clusters, or the flower, sorry, flowers are gonna turn into. These beautiful wine goblets, which Angophra sort of means, ancient, uh, ancient wine goblet, it sort of means, or vessel bearing. You can see the ribs and the teeth up the top, which are like the sepal remnants. You get these teeth in Angophra up the top of the fruit, and the ribs is what tells you you got an Angophra fruit. These are a bit old and on the crusty side. Uh, they're not strongly woody. I can sort of crush them up with my hands. A lot of Angophra fruit, not all, but some. You can sort of give it a bit of a squeeze and it will crush up. But um, they're nice and big and genuine in this species. Very easy to identify. And Gophrey Hispida, dwarf apple. Just finally adding, it's it's pretty much a genuine Hawkesbury sandstone species. You might find it on some shale sandstone transition. You might you'll find it on the Mittagong formation as well. But a lot of the time, you're going to have sandstone outcrop, Hawkesbury sandstone outcrop. Um, possibly you'll find it on alluvium in Western Sydney, the sort of alluvial endangered communities we got, something like Castle Ray Scribbly Gum Woodlands. You might find it in there. You tend to find um, Angophra Baker Eye a lot more often. So it's a real sandy sandstone species, this one.